All right, so here we are, we're looking at the Geospatial Lab Application 7.1 that starts in your textbook on page 261, 261. Um, or if you're in the online textbook, it's the 7.1 Geospatial App Lab Application, GIS Layouts, uh, QGIS version. So in this exercise, we are creating a nice looking map, basically. Okay, so I got a couple questions on this, so I'm just gonna work through it. What I've already done is added in my data, which you're seeing under that initial pre-mapping tasks, and now I'm gonna set that um, projection. So the next step is to set the properties. This is the number four on page 263. Set the properties of the project you're working on so that QGIS will be able to render some of the map elements you'll be working with, such as the scale bar. From the project pull-down menu, choose project properties. So I think this is where some folks ran into problems with their scale bars not displaying. Um, I'm guessing we have an older version of the textbook and a newer version of um, the software. So you'll see it looks a little bit different than your book. Um, so we want the coordinate reference system tab. Notice there's no longer a checkbox for the enable on the fly transformation, right? So this is a newer version. It doesn't have that, but it's okay. Um, in the box next to filter, type US national. Oops, 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 hang on. And we're back, I didn't mean to hit enter there. So typed in next filter, US national equal, US national atlas equal area. And we can start to see that it's popping up here under um, the coordinate system, the coordinate reference systems of the world box, because coordinate reference systems of the world, we see US national atlas area, we'll click on that. And then we click apply to set the projection, then we'll click OK. All right, so we shouldn't see that much change. Um, all right, 7.2 said in graduated symbols. Most of you did this okay. Um, so I'm gonna pause the video um, once I show you where it is. Right click, properties. Click the style tab, which again, this is gonna look a little bit different. So we are going to go to the symbology tab. It's not called the style tab anymore. And we need to change it from the simple fill. Um, this is where we're looking for that, um, which you're not seeing, but that simple layer type. So it's asking you in the book just to change it to graduated, but here we can, um, I don't know, we'll leave on simple fill. Uh, we wanna change it to graduated symbols, which is, Hang on. So if you notice, what I did not do, uh, well, what you should do is I was looking for this drop-down menu. See, here it is. Uh, the first pull-down menu to the right of the style tab right here. Totally went by it. But this is where we're selecting graduated from. So it's just right up here at the top. Um, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Column. The column to use is population density, so we'll find that here, pop dens, oops, that's not it, pop dens, use five, the number of classes, which is down here, five, so it already has five classes, quantile equal count, uh, I'm not a big fan of the red, so you could change it if you wanted to. Um, change the color. We could uh, type in a hex code if we wanted. Um, we could, let's see what other things are in the color ramp. Oh, we could do blues or greens. We can make our own. Let's do um, blue. We'll just do grays. Keep it simple. Um, okay. All right. So we will click apply and we'll see that it starts to change and okay. So they picked blue in the textbook. That's totally fine. Um, all right, so let's pause again and see what's coming in. All right, so in 7.3, the composer and QGIS were being asked to create our print layout. You may have already noticed that you no longer have that uh, composer, uh, new print composer from the project pull down, but you do have a new print layout and that's what they're calling composer now. So click on new print layout. 
and we'll title it and we'll give it a title we'll click OK and we'll see where did my mouse go we'll see our composer pop up all right so in 7.3 they go through the details of the composer in 7.4 they talk about setting your map we start setting up our um, um, final map layout so they want you to put it in the portrait um, layout versus landscape layout. So right now we're in landscape, we need to switch it to portrait. Um, now the textbook asks you um, to click on the composition tab and then under page size. But we don't necessarily see that right away. So we can click on item properties. Oh, well, uh, if you don't see under item properties, the page size, you can right click and go to page properties and it'll show up under item properties. And this is where we can change that page size. Oops, that's not what we wanted. Ugh, go back to A4. <laughs> change that from landscape to portrait okay there we go and we'll start adding our items in the first thing we're adding to our map layout or our print layout is our map itself so we click on the add a new map button on this vertical toolbar which is sort of the rolled up piece of paper with a plus sign and then it asks you to draw a box on the layout so we'll draw that sort of vertical box for the state of California, and then you'll see it added in. So we can um, resize this box as needed. We can use, oops, too much. Um, we can use, which zoom do we want to use? This one. Uh, nope, still too much. Um, To zoom in on your map, we'll click on this zoom, or, um, move items icon. And we'll click on the map, and then if you just you can scroll in on your map um, as you need to, um, and then we can sort of shift it around so it's nice and centered. Um, if we wanted a color for the border, we could do that here in our item properties. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. We could have background, we got in this frame line if we wanted, and you'll see that that gets added in over here. Let's, 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 um, okay, what else? Placing the scale bar. This is where people had the issues. So when we go to add item uh, scale bar, my guess is that some of you struggled with the um, changing the projection if it's not displaying correctly. I saw a lot of like random zeros and ones on the map. That's what I'm guessing why mine is drawing and yours didn't, but it's just right under that add item. So I'm sorry if it was frustrating. Go back and check to make sure that you change the projection appropriately. Um, so we're adding scale bar and you can see in the properties how you can change everything. We can go to add item, add a north arrow. Um, Add image, sorry, add image. I'm gonna add that image back in. So let's get rid of this picture. So add picture and then We'll draw it in just a little north arrow um, and we will go to search directories and you'll start to see all these different north arrows pop up. So we just want a really simple one. You can see it changed on my map and then we can move it wherever we want it to be. Make it, small. Make it smaller. <laughs> all right, 7.9 asks us to put that legend in. So we go back to our regular QGIS window and we have to set our properties. All right, so I right clicked and went to rename layer and renamed our population for square miles. Um, and then we go back to our print layout window and we add in a new legend. A lot of you did not have any problems with. Um, Add in the new legend. Some of you went through this and made some changes. 
um, to the title or to some of the spacing in it. So that was great too. Um, we then had some folks add in city names, which was great. The last thing I think the book asks you to add in, um, is just your, some text. So we will go to add new label. We'll just put that here for now and we will change it to our name and the other things that it asks for over here in the label properties. All right, so you can see we've added that in and you can look on here and see that it's not quite um, fitting in the box. I had to reshape it a little bit. Um, and then, you know, like I mentioned in the assignment, go to page 276 or that last page of the Geospatial Lab 7.1 for the key GIS. Um, and it goes to that final layout checklist. So it asks that the population is in state of population per square mile classified and displayed with appropriate color scheme. Check. We've got all those titles changed and we're using graduated colors for this quantitative data. We added a map legend with the appropriate items. Oh, we don't have a map legend. Yes, we do. We, sorry, we added our map legend. Um, some of you added in things like the cities and that was great. Um, scale bar. This is where some folks had trouble, but I understand or my guess is it had to do with the projection. Um, proper units or kilometers check. Oh, I don't have a title on my map, so I have to add in a title. Um, I'll make a note of that before I submit it. An appropriately sized north arrow, so not taking up the whole page. Your name, date, and the source of the data. Um, and overall design looks good. So um, some of the things I would do is probably work on making sure this was had the equal margins to the page on both sides. Um, working on the layout of these things on the bottom so it's a bit more logical of how people read it. Um, put that there. Oops, that's what I wanted to do. Come here. Yep. Um, maybe making the legend larger. I don't know. Um, and I would add a title so it was clear. So some folks did not have titles. Um, so I'm going to go back. We would go to add item, add t -t 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 label, we'll say mm -hmm. and we can make the size larger. Uh, Maybe resize this. We have a little bit more room for our title at the top up here. There we go. So pretty simple, uh, or it can get a little confusing, especially those of you that struggled with the um, scale bar just because of uh, issues with the projection. But this is what you would um, save, and they want you to how they want you to export this. Yeah. Um, you'll go to export as an image. Um, and save it that way. So hopefully this cleared up some of the issues some folks were having. Um, let me know if you have other questions.